Okay, I got what I wanted off of it. And now it's going to a new home. I have a guy that named uh, Riley that bought the frame. We're headed up to his place to take a look at his projects. Okay, I'm up here at... I'm going to call him a friend of mine now because we have we got common interests. Uh, his name's Riley and he builds custom F-100s. And this is, uh, this is a 1960... Five. 65. And what's that rear end out of? So that's the Crown Vic 8.8. Crown Vicker and he's cleaned it off. Cut the hangers off the frame. Did you shorten this frame? Nope. This was a short bed. Short bed. So running the TCI parallelogram um, leaf spring suspension. That is that is sharp. That's a that's a custom clean setup. And it's made by who? TCI. TCI. Yeah, that's, we were yesterday at uh, the guy who bought the hood off that truck. He lives in uh, uh, Pleasant Grove and his name's uh, Kevin. And he put the whole frame under and he talked about how the challenge is, but he put it under a 62. Wow. And uh, it looks cool and he did a great job, but this is, this is a, this would be quick, down and dirty quick. Yeah. And then, like I said, I got a 1970s uh, Ford Mustang gas tank that it slides in the frame rail. You build a, at an angle iron, I built a little holder for it that slides in on the rails. And then take this cross member that's currently here, that's flipped up, flip it upside down and move it to the rear. rear. All right, that's oh, awesome. Grandpa. That's awesome. Are you filming a video? Mm-hmm. That's nice. Are those, uh, those aren't crown, stock crown deck wheels, are they? No, they're Mustang wheels. Mustang wheels. Mustang wheels. Okay, and now, oh, that's pretty. So it's a 94 Ford um, 460 EFI engine. Oh, that's been, I've modified it to be over 550 horse engine. Wow. So. But it's Crown Vic front end put into the frame. We used boxing plates, slid them in. And is that from TCI as well? No. So these kits um, are universal kits. They're just a boxing kit that you can buy from several uh, manufacturers. Okay. You pi you after you strip everything off and you cut all the old off of it, and then you set it here, and then you'll. Mark your two holes for the top here and cut it and then you'll slide the box plate down into the top, drill the holes, run the bolts down, get everything bolted, the front end up, everything bolted tight and then you'll go ahead and burn it in. Wow. And what year did you say the motor was? 94. 94. And so it's still throttle body injected, isn't it? Or is it multi-port? No, it's multi-port. Multi oh yeah, sure. There and then is. I'm running the... Uh, E4OD transmission that was behind it too, converted it from a four-wheel drive back to a two-wheel two drive, drive transmission. Uh, running outcast brackets here on the frame. They're brackets to make it easy mount up on it. And then same thing, they're the motor mounts for outcast custom motor mounts. And that, those bolt right to the Crown Vic yep. location. Man. Running pirate jacks. Um, Brake, brake kit to put um, power brakes on it. So, have you ever used the uh, Crown Vic power brake setup? So, I haven't because these um, bolt right into the brackets. There's no. Gotcha. So, for me, it was a no-brainer to do that. <laughs> awesome. Wow. Have you done anything on the inside yet? So, I've done the dash. The customized dash. I'm waiting on the steering wheel. Oh, yeah. Now, you showed me pictures of this. And then I got the wiring harness, the new 21-circuit um, wiring harness laying there that's halfway installed. Now, did you say you're putting a GM column in this? Yeah. Huh? Do you have any experience with the GM column putting the stock Ford steering wheel back on it? 
So that's one of them eight bolt ones. So it doesn't matter. I'm not going to have the Ford steering wheel. It's going to be whatever. Building. But you can put the Ford one back in it, can't you? Yes, if you buy the adapter kit. But gotcha. I, I want to. I'm doing it like a billet one a little bit for what my dad wanted. <laughs> and this is the truck for your dad, right? Yep. And what are you going to be doing with it? We are going to be running it out at Rocky Mountain Race Week. So we're building it to go to Rocky Mountain Race Week, and that's July or June 18th is the first date for that. Wow. And it starts in? It, Kansas. What, starts in Kansas. Okay. So we wow, took this Bravo. truck from an old truck to slam it together to get it on the road. <laughs> Will it be painted and everything? Nope, nope. it's going as is, is this year. That's why some of this looks down and dirty because we're, I'm running out of time. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, this is uh, this is cool. We were just in uh, Kaysville. There's a guy there named Larry that builds these too. So I'm going to try to get with him and see what he's all about. Older guy that seems real nice. He bought the inner fenders. Uh, for off me. But yeah, this one, like I said, everything is no modification to fit this in here. It's tight. Um, headers are off. Uh, 94 F350 actually fit this down in this frame. So <laughs> that's a huge bell housing and everything, doesn't it? That 460. Yes, that's a huge motor. That's a huge motor. Oh, that's nice. That is nice. I think it come out of clean install. Yeah. Yeah. So, looks like this one has pretty good cab mounts. We just put new cab mounts in. Oh, you put the mounts in it. Yeah, okay. new, ru new rubber mounts all the way through mm -hmm. because I needed to gain the height of a new mount to clear the transmission but, on the tunnel. But did you replace this no, part? No, this, this truck is a very solid truck. Yeah. So I did not have to do any rust repair. That is so weird, you know, that the, they rot and they all have their typical spots where they rust and then, but to find one like this that no rust at all on the cab mount is amazing. Yep. Do you know where the truck came from? I do not know where my dad ended up. He just, one weekend it showed up so <laughs> he got it from one of his buddies from somewhere so i couldn't tell you where the truck actually came from and are you planning on using uh, air, the air conditioning and everything mm -hmm. on it yeah later on we'll do a vintage air system inside the truck here but i want to go ahead and set it up with the serpentine belts to have the ac compressor absolutely absolutely so most everything that that is getting put on this truck is out of that truck that i did a, my diesel conversion on so you're doing a uh, rack and pinion, the Crown Vic rack and pinions there, and you just need to hook the lines up. And yep. you, the Ford pump already has its own reservoir. And so, everything. so what you do is you'll get a a brand new pressure line from a from a 2003 Crown Vic, and a new pressure line out of a 94 Ford F350 line, and I take them down to Eric's um, hose house of hose is what it mm -hmm. used to be, and then I have them put the two ends of each on into one hose and then I'll have one hose that goes specifically for this. Okay, where did you get this steering knuckle? So this is a Crown Vic steering knuckle right now and I just I just mocked this up so I could roll it around. So to get the column to work you need to use a a Mustang um, to the tri uh, triangle to a D&D &D shaft and then a D&D. Gotcha. So, but that's a factory piece that down there. Yes, that is the Crown Vic steering linkage made into that. That's awesome. Yeah, so it's a three quarter D and D Ford triangle that you'll have to use to adapt. There it is, D and D to the Ford triangle. Gotcha. From down at that gearbox. And that'll give that for the DND shaft and then just a regular three-quarter DND here to wherever. Yeah, I'm thinking about swapping my column because all the wiring harnesses are set up for GMs. Yep. And so I'm thinking about doing a GM column in mine and 
Well, that's why I'm doing that new Make 21 circuit. It's based on a GM, yep. putting yep. a GM column in this, and then put a GM uh, headlight switch. All the switches inside match the GM yeah, harness. Because the knobs will all fit. A uh, little bit of tweaking on them, you can make them work. Got it. Wow. That is way cool. So do you add another cross member up here? Nope. So whenever you put this in, this, this cross member is actually very strong out of mm -hmm. the ground VIX. So you won't, you can if you, you can put a bar in between out here, but most of them that I've seen don't have that bar. Gotcha. The only other thing to make this engine fit here, the first cross member that runs here from your radius or arms and across, mm -hmm. I had to cut that out of that. So I'm going to build another one that goes up and around the frame and use to make me another cross member that's going to strengthen it. It goes across this direction. Yep. Gotcha. But I had to pull it out to fit the transmission in it. <laughs> Man. Well, this is, uh, this is cool. This is some cool stuff. So you're going to use a, uh, you're going to buy an aftermarket wiring harness or are you going to use the wiring harness that was originally on the 460 so i've actually got a company to make this engine they do a hot rod kit specifically for this engine okay well, that runs a mass airflow because this is a speed density engine mm -hmm. so they build it with a custom harness that runs for a mass airflow sensor like the mustangs so i bought their kit and their kit plugs into the transmission so their harness with plus four wire hookup i have and that 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 includes the body control unit, the the computer, the base, ECM, ECM, everything. Yeah. The kits uh, with the transmission controller, you're right up twenty five hundred bucks for that full kit. Mm. So, <laughs> well, this this hobby's not cheap, is it? No, this is not cheap. I built, <laughs> but for most people that want to get into this, you can build this on a cheap. This truck was built on the cheap of. A lot of this is uh, junkyard parts, spare parts that's mm -hmm. been laying around that you could build it right out of your own garage. Gotcha. Everything I've done is simple that you could build out of your own garage. Well, it looks, it looks that's awesome. When you come around the corner and see that bee sitting in there, that's way cool. So it just takes a lot of thinking ahead and planning, your, <laughs> planning what, what to do. Wow. So you told me about another vehicle that you have we wanted to look at, uh, a Honda? Yep. Okay, let's go look at the Honda. National cab and front end put on top of a 96 uh, Dodge uh, 1500 frame short box. <laughs> That's going to be cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 55 Dodge Royal. That's the one that's got that handling in it. Oh, now that I see it, <laughs> I do remember these. I do remember. So this is a, how many cylinders? Two cylinder. Two cylinder. Runs on a two cylinder motorcycle engine. Is it a four stroke or two stroke? Four stroke. Four stroke. Jason, don't so. I think it's <laughs> locked, buddy. Yeah, it sticks. But yeah, that's these little cars like this. And you say you're going to put a 460 in this one? No. <laughs> this one's going to stay all the same. It just takes a little bit of time finding parts for this oh, one. Oh, wow. And you know what? Those the, the Honda Civics, you know, the little little ones, my wife had one of those. And they were known to be rust buckets. And this car looks like it's super, super clean. This car is real clean. No, I don't see any of the typical rust. Now, just a little bit in the rockers, it's starting, and then right here at the corner here, I've got a little bit, but nothing. Now, and what year would you say this, this is? This is a 1970. A 70. Wow. Yeah, hers was the, hers was the, it was the newer version, and it was, it was a rusty bugger. Holy cow. Well, that's cool. I would definitely like to be, come around when you start putting that thing together. Well, but our seats are not All right. that Here's this truck, a 94? 94. 94. It's dirty because it's... <laughs> oh, you love to love that. So, what's the transmission setup with this? So, it's a E4OD out of a 95 Power Stroke. Fully built. Um, 
to handle 650 horsepower. So billet everything that you could get on it. Nice. And you're running a Ford transfer case? Yep, 1356. Okay. Same thing, I have a 95 power stroke is where I put this all in. Well, it looks like it was made to be there, doesn't it? I put a lot of work into making it look like that. Yeah. So this engine come out of a Ford school bus. So all the intercooler pipes had stamped Ford on them. So I took all that out of the bus and then I've cut them and everything to fit in here. So every I'm building this to make it look like this came in this truck. Well, it does. So a little bit of... And what, what year's the, the 12 valve? 96. 96 12 valve. I had a 96 Dodge with the 12 valve in it and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Yeah, with a P-pump in it, yeah. you can't go wrong. But yeah, yeah, I've been building this one. It's dirty because, like I said, I've been I've, I've been gone for eight months. See, I just barely got home because I did another tour. Can I see? Oh, you're in the service? Mm -hmm. What branch? Air Force. In the Air Force. Yep. So I just got home November. So that's why that project started. Oh, yeah. Hi. Hey. Yeah, you got eight months to catch up on and then everything else. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of this. Yeah, all that and doing this conversion, everything starts at $1,000 and up. <laughs> the Cummins is the number six uh, valve cover. To get it out of there, easy to mm -hmm. work on it. You have to, you can do it without it, but it's a pain to get that out of there for maintenance. So I went ahead and put the body lift on Two it. Two inch? Three inch. Three inch body I should have went to a two inch, but three inch I got it on sale, so. How is, are these That's awesome.